gon' chew me, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. But before we get too far into Suicide Squad, Isekai, Animo, Anime Expo did happen mm-hmm. recently. We got a ton of anime announcements that are coming this year. Fall season's about to be stacked. And we got some announcements yep. for what to expect in um, 2025 and 2026. So starting at the top, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 3 is dropping October 2024. Blue Exorcist Beyond the Snow Saga is dropping October 2024. Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gala Online October 2024. Seven Deadly Sins Four Nights of the Apocalypse Season 2 October 2024. Roroni Kenshin, Season 2, Kyoto Disturbance, October 2024. Um, was there a date on which hat Atelier, or did you, or did they just say Atelier. 2025? Atelier? They just did said just 2025. Say 2025. Okay. So, let me, so solo leveling uh, um, arise from the shadow. I'm assuming that's keyword solo leveling Season 2. They d- just said coming soon. I have some thoughts on that. Uh, we're getting another Batman Ninja movie, Batman versus the Yakuza League. And then 2025, um, Ryan mentioned it on our Demon Slayer mob review, but it, or uh, not Demon Slayer, but Kaiju number eight mob review. Uh, Fire Force season three did get announced. Um, part of it is coming out April 2025, and then the next part is coming out January 2026. So, how did you feel about these announcements, Ryan? Because a lot of these that are on the list are uh, animes that you have done my reviews for. So I'm going to get the easy ones out the way. Bleach, part three. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. The graphics, the story. I'm a Bleach fan. It's lit. There's nothing else to say about it. I think we're getting into the point where Ichigo and Uryu actually got to have their encounter. I'm looking forward to it. Blue Exorcist Beyond the Snow, by that point, I stopped reading the manga because I think by then when I started back reading the manga, the anim- the new seasons came out and I was like, you know what, now I can enjoy it in an anime format. But the last season of Blue Exorcist, really well executed. I love the art style. It's a little bit more modernized. I love the tone. Glad Blue Exorcist is getting that support. Sword Art Alternative. A lot of y'all may not know about Sword Art Alternative Gun Gale Online. The first one was really good. Kirito and Asuna were not the main characters. It was, um, I know her gun's name. It was this girl who used a gun called Pichon. It was nice. It was lovely. The story was consistent. The plot was consistent. I liked it. I'm interested in season two. I'm interested in seeing what they do with that. Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Portion when, Foot, when you was reading it out, I gave it an eh. I watched season one and I was like, it's cool. Not give me all of what I want from Seven Daily Sins. I might watch it. I might not. For Roroni Kenshin, season one was nice. It's a reboot from an older franchise from like the Yu Yu Hakusho era, if you're familiar with Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm-hmm. Togashi's first project. So that's like pre Shonen era, the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z era before the big three really came into when Roroni Kenshin was really big. So the reboot is solid. I'm pissed off of Fire Force season three, though. I'm pissed <laughs> off. Eat your I macaroni. love Fire eat Force. Your, eat your macaroni. Eat your macaroni. Eat your macaroni. Go watch a. Your... Go watch the Kaiju number eight review, y'all. <laughs> eat well, your macaroni. Not- eat your ma- I I feel you though. I feel you. I would say at least they said something. Cause it really felt like, and honestly, truly, it really felt like Fire Force put out season two and then they just dropped off the face of the earth. Cause so you it, watched it too, right? That was like yeah. three or four years ago at this point. Yeah, that, that was a while ago when I watched Fire Force. Like, yo, and it's one of Kodansha's big shonens too. Like Kodansha is the one the producers of um Fairy Tale. It's one mm-hmm. of their big shonens. They got manga box sets coming out. I'm like, what 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 went wrong with the budgeting, the scheduling? What went wrong here? I don't know. I'm so, I don't want to rant. I'm sorry. It, it, I'm happy we got something. I'm mad that y'all even have 2026 somewhere written down there. Season one, part one, core one, whatever y'all call it, it better be at least 24 episodes, bro. Y'all better be saying this is season four that's coming in 2026. Please the fact don't piss that me they off. said. <laughs> The fact that they said two dates sounds like they're splitting it up. It might be what they're doing with My Hero, where My Hero Core 2 of Season 7 um, just came back today. 
So they might be doing they it might be that type of situation. Y'all do a really great job at pissing me because, off. Because because they said because they I'll said say. this is the they said this is the final season. And I and there's how the how many balls? I think they said this was the final season. If this is the final season, that means they got to be twenty four episode seasons. That's why I was going to ask you the, how many more, how many volumes is the manga? I feel like I saw somewhere where they said that season three of Fire Force is the end, is the final season. I never got into reading Fire Force's manga. I planned to buy, it, but I was waiting for box sets to actually read it. Um, manga volume list. Let me look it up. I think I'm seeing. List of volumes, 178. No, that's probably more so chapters. It's 33 actual volumes. So we talking as long as Demon Slayer? How many volumes are in Demon Slayer? I thought Demon Slayer was like 20-something. We didn't get to know 30. Touch, we didn't get to know 30 volumes. 30? No. Okay. So that so if Demon Slayer is 23 volumes, if Demon Slayer is 23 volumes of content, and Fire Force is 30... Three? That's ten extra volumes. Ain't no way y'all finna finish it off in two seasons. It, I'm reading it right here, though. I looked it up. The overdue announcement delighted fans during Crunchyroll's industry panel at Anime 2024. While, to the audience's dismay, the wait isn't actually over yet. The third and last season of the fiery anime series is set to arrive in the first half of 2025. So that means... They gotta be twenty four episodes. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I should have read. The I, I wasn't. I wasn't saying. I wasn't saying that it wasn't going to be twenty twenty four twenty four episodes. I'm saying that they're probably going to release it in cores. That the first core of this oh. is April twenty twenty five date, and the second core. How many cores they? It, I'm, it's looking like it might be two. The second core drops January twenty twenty six. I'm int- I don't know. I don't know, because with 33 volumes, and y'all saying it's going to be done in two full seasons, I don't know if these seasons going to be extra long. How many volumes are in Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan is about 30-some volumes a month. Yeah, I think Attack on Titan was like 34. Because it's up, it's up there. And that's what I'm saying. Like, when it comes to that, I don't... Unless y'all, I hope they don't rush it. They did a good job with season one and two, in my opinion. I'm not a manga reader, though, so y'all manga readers come in and let me know. But I don't know. I'm going to watch it anyway. Mm. And I'm by the manga. Um, going to the other announcements, because I, I can rant all day by Fire Force. Which had Atelier. I don't think I mentioned it to you. It's a super, super high fantasy manga. And it utilizes like this like mathematical, scientific approach for how they make spell, how they utilize spellcraft, if I remember correctly. I peered into volume one. And it looked interesting, but I'm like, I got too many other mangas in my backlog that I need to read, but I knew it was something I was going to dip into because it given those free ran Mushoku Tensei high fantasy vibes. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of heard back in the day that an anime may be in the works, but the trailer looked damn good. It Like just as a fantasy fan, just as a fantasy fan, not an anime fan, fantasy fan, it looked damn good. All the manga YouTubers I watched gave, which had actually a high prestige so i'm actually really looking forward to that and i'm going in semi-blind okay like i feel like it's going to fill that hole that free run and mushoku tensei be living leaving in us fantasy fans hearts mm-hmm. and solo leveling i don't know what they're doing you said you got some input on that i don't know why they ain't got no I, I have some i have some thoughts on the trailer that they released i because i was i was watching it again and I was thinking back to our mob review on how we wanted like a bit more to the story. On right. like, but the but the the trailer they showed was all action, and I was like, okay, that kind of makes me kind of nervous. Is the selling or is the selling point the action or is is the story finna take a back seat? Because we did we did praise the animation. They did praise the action scenes we- in the coming in the coming soon trailer. It's straight action. You I can get into it and disappoint them fans. You're I was get a, into it. I was a bit <laughs> nervous on where it because the trailer <laughs> didn't give anything on where the story was going. Nothing for a minute, for a minute, and whatever. It'd be different if it was a thirty second teaser. Then yeah, I'll put the bing bang booms in there because you only got thirty seconds. This trailer was like a minute and something of just fighting. 
We didn't want to tie in anything, you know, related to the story or whatever, what <sighs> going on with everybody else was going on with the Hunter Association. Nothing. I am on your side 100% in full. I was very disappointed with the plot and the character breakdowns that they did in season one. And I want to talk to y'all Munwa readers. I want to hear from y'all. I hope y'all ain't the same people who be hating on Demon Slayer because th- this animation was amazing. The fight choreography, mm-hmm. chef's kiss for what it was doing. But where's the plot? Where Where's the story? This video game-esque world, Isekai light. Like, wh- what's going on here? My what are we doing here? My whole thing is that I can't be hyped because at the end of all of it, at the end of the action scenes, seeing Jin Wu going against like the the whatever the fuck they were doing in the snow and all Little the other necromancers th- and all that. Right at the end of at the end of all of it, I can't be excited because you said coming soon. What does that mean? Coming soon could be twenty twenty five. Coming soon could be tomorrow. I don't know. It it makes me wonder if either they're in crunch and they're trying to push it out quick or if they still got some budgetary needs that they trying to get through cuz I forgot did we ever did we ever find out who was the like the studio behind them I think it was like a studio we was unfamiliar with I saw something that this season of solo leveling is supposed to be done by A1 Pictures now I don't know if that's the same studio hey. that did season 1 Ooh I don't want to get my stuff mixed up because I just watched a video on this. I think A1 Pictures is more so connected to Anime Plex. If it's A1 Pictures, they got experience with this. Like, they're used to churning their stuff out and having a quality plan, so I don't Mm -hmm. know where our date is. Like, if it's 2025, just say that. If y'all trying to push for 2024, then I kind of see why y'all said coming soon, but... I don't know. I the, the the trailer just made me a bit nervous for it to be a, a minute and 30 something of straight action, but no story elements. And with No and, and Jin Wu discovered who he truly is as a person right, and his friends was, are there and nothing. Cuz I was just thinking back to our mom review of how we felt like some of the plot was lacking and you know, we were making we were talking all these hypotheticals about where season 2 may go and how all this stuff is connected and then the coming soon trailer is just hands. Yeah. And it's interesting cuz I'm not mad at hands. I enjoyed Windbreaker. I think Demon Slayer is a decent story and I enjoy Demon Slayer for those who think it's not carried it don't have a good plot. But like solo leveling didn't really give us anything worth of a plot. Like they really just did a little bit of seeds for what could come about with the guilds here, mm-hmm. his friends, rich family, rich dad over here. Like they put seeds, but they ain't really like push anything forward outside of Jin Wu's abilities. So like season two, I mean like y'all need to bring something to fruition. What's with that island? Where did these um dungeons come from? Like y'all need to give us something. Some more world building something. I agree. something. I agree. I I also don't know what the push was to release something like a full trailer for Anime Expo. Because I don't think they released a trailer for uh, Shangri-La. I think they just announced that it was coming back October 2024. I guess I, I don't know what the push was for, us, for you to show us something for Solo Living. And the trailer looked like it had a few things, like almost like a chunk of an episode done up in there. So it's like coming soon. Do y'all got like two, three episodes in progress right now? Like what y'all doing here? I don't know. I guess we'll have to check in on Solo Leveling at a later date. The Batman Ninja movie, I watched the first Batman Ninja. I remember enjoying it, but that was during my time. I need to revisit it because I watched Batman Ninja during the time where I wasn't like fully checked in into anime. I watched it because it was mm. Batman and not because it was anime influence. So I want to go back and watch it and get a different perspective. Now that I, you know, I'm in tune with anime, I know the tropes and the, and the things like that, but this Batman versus uh Yakuza League look interesting. They're introducing the other uh Justice League characters. We saw Flash, we saw Wonder Woman, we saw a Green Lantern. Um Robin's. We didn't know it. which Green Lantern it was. It's it's um one of the the girl Green Lanterns, but I can't remember her name. 
Okay. I can't remember her name. So I need um because it's it's hella Green Lanterns and they have they have a few uh female Green Lanterns it's like how they have a few male Green Lanterns but it look it looked interesting the uh the synopsis look interesting um Joker's supposed to be involved Gorilla Grodd's supposed to be involved um so I'm gonna watch it but I'm gonna make sure to watch the first Batman Ninja again through new lenses before I check this one out. That's fair. That's very fair. It it caught my eye. I didn't watch the first one, but I'm like, okay, I think I'll definitely check this out. I don't know if it's like a continuation of the story, but because of how much time has passed, they probably gonna do a good recap anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'll check it out. Yeah, I I thought it was interesting. Well, maybe maybe not too far left now that they've um announced the su- now that the Suicide Squad Isekai is out. I don't think it was too mm-hmm. left field for them to come with Batman Ninja behind it. And it kind of makes me think that, okay, so we're really committing to this Warner Brothers Japan anime distribution. It it makes me wonder what other stuff they got planned or if right. this is like a test run. Like, are y'all just saying, okay, we had the first Batman Ninja, but now the anime's big. Let's drop a second one. Let's get the Suicide Isekai. And if these go hard... Oh, we finna do a lot more. Is that what y'all planning? Like, that's what y'all thinking? That's what I want to know. Like, is this mm-hmm. a resurgence of DC animation going into DC anime? Because I it feel looks like I, it kind of fits. And yeah, and I'm curious to see what elements they apply because I think Batman is was very fitting to convert into this style um i would like to see what they can do with other franchises because like the dc universe has so many characters so what characters are they looking at to be like oh we could merge this into an anime or we could merge this storyline into an anime like yeah they could they could do different genres like they can do horror if they wanted to depending on what storyline they focus on so and they already don't have an issue with showing some brutality in their animated movies anyway, and some animes can be very brutal, so they have mm-hmm. that freedom of expression if they're doing the anime theme slash anime studio was actually producing it. So, I could... I, I haven't finished Suicide Squad, like we said, only on episode one, but because I'm in that middle where I don't know if I hate it or like it yet, I'm open. I'm open to it. Yeah, I'm open to it. So, let's stay on the anime topic. We're in the 2024 summer anime season. Um, like me and Ryan mentioned before, we are starting Suicide Squad East Sky. Fairy Tale Hundred Years Quest has finally dropped. And if Ryan um has any other recommendations for you guys, he's gonna let you all know. But let's start with let's start with Fairy Tale. We've been talking about Suicide Squad East Sky for a while. So let's get into Fairy Tale. At this point in time, we've only seen the first episode. Um mm-hmm. By the time you're listening to this episode, the second episode will be out. I've read a little bit of the manga for Fairy Tale: Hundred Years Quest, so we can just have a bit of discussion about how we feel about Fairy Tale coming back in 2024, and what we um, what are we expecting going forward? I am just happy. I'm just happy. I'm I. I'm gonna be honest. I'm. A, I don't know if I told you this. Fairy Tale was like the third or fourth anime I discovered when I really got into anime as a kid. Like when I started to realize that Bakugan, Yu Gi Oh, and Beyblade and Pokemon are actually anime. Like when I thought they were cartoons, not then. Right when I started watching Naruto subbed, I discovered Fairy Tale not too long. And Fairy Tale Hundred Years Quest just looks like more Fairy Tale, and I'm happy. The mm-hmm. art looks good. I think everybody read a little too deep into that picture. I feel like it looks just some like um updated version of the same thing that we were used to and accustomed to. It looks yeah. good. It looks it looks de- it definitely looks lighter, but I the way that the animation is drawn reminds me of like the final season. Like it wasn't too much mm-hmm. of a job. Exactly. And like I liked it even though we're kind of jumping into like the quest in general, they still allow like fairy tale fans to come back, see what the rest of the guild is up to, have some little foreshadowing with these new introduced characters or whatever, seeing how Juvia's doing Kana, Makarov, Laxis. Mm-hmm. And it was good. It just felt it felt good to be back, bro. 
this was this is the best way to do an introduction episode for fairy tale in my opinion it felt good no nah, i 100 percent agree i'm glad that they kept the theme and the vibe of fairy tale it felt more like a coming home experience yeah because and the only reason i say that is because um we have had some issues where the manga to anime ad- adaptation they try to change things they try to change the tone they try to change the way the anime feels but this feels one it felt exactly how i read in the manga and mm-hmm. it's still in, in if you were just the only anime watcher it feels exactly like where we left off Mm-hmm. so i 100 percent have to give them that that this still feels very fairy tale tone setting the character relationships they sound it just feels feels good bro i'm it's a good day to be a fairy tale fan and did we get an approval for how many episodes this is going to be are they doing like a 25 I 24 12 episodes i thought i saw something that said this was going to be like 24 episodes even better so we get to enjoy this basically all the way up until the latter half of the fall season i mean the beginning half of the fall season basically mid fall yeah i'm I'm here for it. I So, based on the intro, where I think they're going to be stopping is a point in the manga mm-hmm. that I haven't got to yet. Interesting. So, at this point, I'm stopping on reading the manga and I'm just going to watch the anime and then, you know, if it's just if it's just they hit in the mark when we get to this last episode and I can't wait. I'll pick up 100 Years Quest again, but based on what I saw in the intro, I think they're going to be playing with um with some scenes from the manga that I haven't even got to yet. But yeah. most of the scenes do look familiar. I'm very excited to see how they're going to animate some of this stuff. I'm excited to see how you're going to feel about the villain for 100 Years Quest. Gotcha. What's your thoughts I- on them going to be? So they kind of introduce they introduce them into this episode, and you ain't got to tell me if it's real or not. But like the way it's like, oh, they're dragon eaters, and they're feeding off of like the dragon's corpses to I guess evolve their powers and strengthen them. I was like, not cannibalism, because don't dragon slayers kind of see themselves as dragons? I want to know if they're raised by dragons. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're on the acnologia stuff, so I guess they're like all elders and like a hundred plus years old. So that's a nice little twist. It added that sense of danger. Being that, oh, yeah, they're basically Acnologia. A whole bunch of them, basically. Oh, well. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny that you say that. He he almost destroyed our entire country, basically. Yeah, he he almost out. destroyed our guild. We spent a whole season fighting him, and we got to fight foe? Okay. We, he he messed us up so bad, we had to travel into the future by a year or two. <laughs> like, okay. So they really set that tone of danger and made and immediately, like, jumped us back into the world of fairy tales. So... I'm interested to see. It's, it's I'm a, interested to see. It's a lot. It's 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 very it's very interesting. They're gonna be playing based on the manga. They're gonna be playing with a lot of elements that we didn't get in the first couple seasons because we're, we're in a new country. We're dealing with new forces. The only person who had some experience in this area is Gildars, and as you guys saw in the first episode, they had to sign an NDA to keep their mouth shut about what they see, what they fall. And what goes down. So they're basically in over their head about what's going to go down in this quiz. Which is so funny because I'm like, wouldn't you want people to like plan ahead, work together? I guess it impacts the country a little bit. I don't know. Like that added a little element, an interesting element to it as well. And then also, seems like there is a subplot. Baby girl who's in love with Natsu might like. I don't know if she's working for the enemy or she's like a secret spy. We got got Jill with the suit on. I don't know what's going on there, but I like it. Like, basically, they just said we got two full stories going on here. Unless they, and they're, I'm assuming they're going to connect at some point, but it's looking good. I can't say too much, but I can't say too I, I I feel like this is fun. I know more <laughs> than you. you like <laughs> I know more than you. This is fun. I like it. I like I like the anticipation. It feels good. <laughs> no, I'm I'm definitely excited that Fairy Tale is back. I'm definitely excited to see how they're gonna be animating these events. And I'm just be I'm just happy to be back watching Fairy Tale. This was the first anime that I watched in full. 
and I and I say it every time it comes up. I'm so glad that you like fairy tale. I've always wanted a friend to talk about fairy tale too. Fairy tale, fairy tale, go, fairy tale go in like once you get past that first arc, that first like introductory arc, they be rolling, they be rolling. I got a hot take. Fairy tale episode one is one of my favorite fairy tale episodes. One of my favorite um intro episodes. When you'd see Lucy and Natsu's like this weirdo, and she's like, I want to look for the salamander. And then you see these dudes, and you think they're trafficking when really they're trying to find models. Mm. <laughs> like, I remember that entire episode by heart. I thought that episode, it was like, it was funny. It definitely had gra- some dark stuff. Yeah. It definitely grabs your attention. And I think that may makes it stand out. Mm hmm. Because I feel like, I feel like some of that, some of the animes that we've watched have been like, First episode, real bad thing happens. Okay. And then fairy tales just like, you know, the imagine the stupidest thing that could ever happen. Fairy tale episode one. We're gonna kidnap these girls to make them models and not not like and the I know guy, what you're thinking, but legit models. <laughs> and the guy and the guy you're looking for has actually been beside you the whole time and said nothing. With with the great legend, he's the salamander. He's a dragon, legendary dragon slayer that you never that everybody just really wants to meet. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm in, I'm here, and I'm in that guild. Oh, the women, you, were, you looking at the models? You were looking for fairy tale. Is, we're right here. Yeah, right here. Like look at this other. I got the tattoo. It's, it was a great episode one. I, maybe I'm fanboying. I love fairy tale. It is what it is. I'm fairy tale is a fun time, but. So, moving on to more episode ones, um, Suicide Squad, Isekai, we've kind of, we talked about this a little bit. It's got my attention. I don't know if I love it. Don't know if I hate it. At this point in time, there's five episodes out. So, definitely catch up if you were interested in it. I think, Mm -hmm. I think it would be, it's an interesting concept of what they have going on it leaves the first episode does leave you if you know amanda waller if you know the lore behind suicide squad i found it very i'm finding it very interesting interesting into why amanda waller is looking into this that's number one yeah i got that vibe too because i'm like i don't know as much of the lore as you but i did watch the suicide squad movies and see how she's integrated into the DCEU. And I'm like, why is she trying to take these folks into a fantasy world anyway? Like, is that just being thrown in there because it's an isekai and we got to get there? But why is she looking into other universes? I, that's, that's my first thing. And it's not like, and, and you're not looking into like alternate earths. Like this isn't the usual multiverse type thing. Like, oh, we're, we're just going to send them to a different earth to get this thing or this thing or this thing. This seems very, Amanda Waller wants something that's very mythical. Because why are we in a land with, like, these ogres and knights and stuff? Like, it's it's obvious that Amanda Waller wants something, but what do you want from here? And and how did you find out about it? How did you discover this? And it, it makes me wonder, like, is it on some Lex Luthor, Mad Scientist? I'm trying to save the city. Like, I want to discover a new energy source. Like, that makes sense, and that's an easy answer, but I don't think that's the answer. I don't I don't think that's the answer. I'm curious into what this leads up to. Like, what, what is she actually trying to do in this world? And then I think it's just going to be hilarious, because I love the team. Peacemaker, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Clayface. I was like, this this is gonna be this is gonna be a mess. Any Suicide Squad team always turns into a mess, but I think this is going to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. And the Harley Quinn vibes were still there too. Like Harley Quinn seeing her, she felt very familiar. Like I was like, Yeah, this is the Harley Quinn I'm used to seeing. I would say in one thing about DC. They don't they never drop the ball on the Harley Quinn design. Or her yeah. character. They they don't drop the ball. I'm not a big fan of the Joker, only because he reminds me of Jared Leto's Joker, and I'm not a big fan of him. I I got that vibe, too. I got that vibe, too. I would agree. I'm not a big fan of the design. Now, if we get into a couple more episodes and, you know, how they visualize the Joker in this anime really appeals to me, they'll have it. Right now, I'm not a big fan. Mm Mm-hmm. It's interesting. 
it's funny because it's like for us and like what our primary passions are it's like the perfect mix for something for you and me to watch (laughs) like on some we got the dc fan here the anime fan here i like a little bit of dc you like a little bit of anime and it's like ah suicide squad and east Coast, watch it (laughs) if this turns out if this turns to be a sleeper hit if this turns out to be something that we got to get on the podcast and talk talk about dc done did something Mob review probably coming soon. Well, mob review definitely mob, coming mob soon. Mob review we'll record definitely it, coming. Record it, one. record it. If it if it pushes me, if it urges me to sit down and talk about this, DC done did something. We'll see what DC can do. We'll see. You watching anything else um for the summer anime season that you want to recommend? Honestly, no. I feel like this is like a buy season. I feel like this season of anime is definitely your time for a lot of people, especially if you're like kind of in my genre of like shonen slash well not that's a demographic if you're into like the shonen battle fantasy sci-fi all of that you could go watch tower of god i've heard good things about tower of god i've heard, I've heard two good things right now i want to check that out actually because i've been hearing some good things about that too i want to watch that and i want to watch this it, this is an anime and this is kind of off topic but i also want to check out blood of zeus too on netflix i've heard of blood of zeus i've heard of that but it, it feels like one of those bye weeks. In my opinion, Suicide Squad's what I'm watching. One Piece never stops. And obviously, My Hero has dipped into this season, so I'm going to keep up with that as well. But I would say for this summer season, if there's anything you missed from, um, what was the previous season? The spring the season? Spring if season. you missed anything, catch up. Catch up yeah. on the stuff you missed. Fall season finna go and dumb. For, fall season's going to go far, dummy. And, 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 I'm not, and I'm not even talking about anime. Anime fall anime fall season is already going everything. on. Everything, everything is coming everything. out this fall. Box Machina is back. The Tomb Raider anime, um, the My Hero movie, like this fall. You got some season. other movies coming in theaters. Arcane, I think Arcane is coming out in November. Like, come on, come on. Video game, video games. Dragon Ball about to drop soon. Dragon Age about to drop. It's being a nerd, we we say like I think last year we said it's a great year to be an anime fan. This is a great year to just be a nerd. I, just like stuff for real. I agree with Ryan. If there's anything that you wanted to watch, anything you need to catch up on, anything that you want to check out, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. Spend this the time fall, trying to because the fall season is leaving no room. You yeah, I, honestly, I'm looking. At, I'm like. Something gotta give. Like when I'm playing these video games, I'm gonna miss some anime for like two weeks playing Dragon Age. Like something at some some time at some point something gotta give. Nah, for real. A lot of y'all may not know about Sword Art Alternative Gun Gale Online. The first one was really good. Kirito and Asuna were not the main characters. It was um I know her gun's name. It was this girl who used a gun called Pichon. It was nice. It was lovely. The story was consistent.